I made modular D&D magic items so my players can change out their weapon abilities on a long rest and they can earn level ups for those abilities by using their items. I'm going to show you exactly how to make your own template and then walk you through the template and items that I made, which you can download in the description. Thank you so much to Improved Initiative for sponsoring this video. Welcome to the table. I'm Kelly and I'm going to show you how to bring $20 loot crates into D&D so you can make some extra cash. Just kidding. <laughs> These aren't pay to play. You have to earn the level ups the good old fashioned way by XP farming some goblins. I'm playing an artificer in my current campaign and I've really enjoyed the modularity of the class. I think it's really fun being able to change out the infusions on a long rest and come up with interesting combos. I wanted to give all of my players a taste of this modularity, especially those who are playing classes where there aren't many options to change abilities out on a long rest. Providing them with an item with a limited number of options felt like an easy way to introduce them to it without overwhelming them. The second thing I wanted to accomplish was giving my players an item that they could keep and bring into higher level play. When I give my players an important magic item, I try to make it narratively impactful. Like, maybe someone from a character's backstory dies and this character inherits their weapon, or maybe it's bestowed to them by a local hero or someone the party looks up to. Making the item narratively significant means the character is going to want to hold on to it. But having a magic item that lasts is very difficult, because either you give it to your player too early and it's overpowered, or you give it to them at the right time, but in a few levels it feels underpowered. With these items, I think I've solved both of these issues, at least for my table. So how do we accomplish modulation? and the ability to level up the item without printing 30 different versions of the card with card sleeves and transparent printer film. This design was heavily inspired by a board game called Dead Reckoning. They were the first ones that I'd seen with a similar system, but once I started researching this video, I found that modular cards on transparent film have been used by a ton of different games. To put this all together, we'll need to come up with a system to prevent the abilities from stacking and becoming overpowered, figure out how many abilities each card should have and how many levels each ability should have, and finally, make a template to be able to print and assemble the cards. To organize the abilities and upgrades and prevent them from becoming overpowered, I've decided to do three ability slots for each card. Each upgrade can only fit in its designated slot. For example, the plus one, plus two, or plus three bonus will just be a slot one upgrade. This means that you can't stack all the bonuses and end up with a plus six weapon. Now that we have the slots, how many upgrades should each ability have? I've designed mine for the different tiers of play, but you can add in as many different levels and abilities as you want. I'll be giving these to my players around level level 4 or 5, and then sprinkling in the level 1 abilities until about level 8. Level 2 abilities will go from 9 to 13, and level 3 abilities from 14 to 20. For each card, there's the opportunity to earn 15 upgrades. There are 3 upgrades for slot 1, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, 2 abilities for slot 2, and 2 abilities for slot 3. Each of the slot 2 and slot 3 abilities have 3 levels. I think the best upgrades in D&D feel earned, like you went out of your way to do something, and because of that, you got rewarded. But I also want to be careful not to derail my campaign by having my players individually trying to go off and accomplish separate fetch quests in order to power up their weapons. So we just need to come up with a mechanic that feels rewarding for the players and can happen anywhere so it doesn't derail the plot. Something that isn't too easy, otherwise they'll get all the abilities at once, but also isn't too hard, otherwise they'll never get them. Something that can be achieved through hard work, but also has an element of luck. Well, that should be easy. The mechanic I've landed on for now, and this is subject to change if it goes terribly wrong in my campaign, campaign is as follows. To unlock the first slot, you just need to attune to the weapon. Some of the weapons have additional attunement requirements, but all of the weapons require you to crit with the weapon to attune to it. So the first time you crit with the weapon, you become attuned to it and gain the level 1 slot 1 ability, which makes the weapon a plus 1 weapon. Every time you unlock a slot, you automatically gain an ability for that slot. The ability is chosen by the DM. Once per combat encounter, if you use an ability, put a dot in the ability track. This should be done at the end of the combat encounter. To unlock slot 2, you need to have 10 dots in a slot 1 ability track. To unlock slot 3, you need to have 10 dots in a slot 2 ability track. To unlock the second abilities from slot 2 and 3, you can make a special DC 35 check. This check can be attempted once per long rest. To make the check, make an attack roll with the weapon, adding the number of dots in the ability track to the result, up to a maximum of 20. Now for unlocking level 2 and level 3 versions of each ability, there's a character level prerequisite, but the check is the same as before, just with different DCs. To unlock the level 2 versions of an ability, you have to have a total character level of 8 or more, and make a DC 40 check. Take the number of dots from the ability you're trying to upgrade and add it to the result of the roll. To unlock a level 3 version of an ability, the minimum total character level is 14 and the DC is 50. These DCs assume that you'll use buffs like Bardic Inspiration or other items, so that will encourage your players to work together to buff each other and help each other 
unlock abilities for their weapons. Before I show you each of the items I made and the printable template for these cards, I want to show you some more cool features of the sponsor of this video, Improved Initiative. Improved Initiative is a full combat tracker that helps you track initiative, keep track of monster stats and abilities, roll attacks and damage, and track HP. It's what I use to run all of my campaigns and it has made running combat so much easier. Improved Initiative is free to use and it comes with all the SRD monsters preloaded. You can also easily add monsters manually or import a JSON file to bulk import monsters. The free version is fully featured and that's what I used for the first few years. But if you sign up to the Patreon in the Epic tier, you get a bunch of really cool features. And now that I've had them, I don't think I could go back. You get account sync, so all your content is saved in the cloud instead of your browser cache, player view customization, and one of my favorites, the D&D Beyond importer. If you purchased content on D&D Beyond, you can use the Chrome extension to automatically import the monsters into Improved Initiative. This is such a handy feature and it's much quicker than bringing the monsters in manually. Head to the link down in the description to try out Improved Initiative, and if you like it, sign up for the Epic tier on Patreon to get even more cool features. Now I want to show you each of the items I made and the art I had commissioned for them. I worked with Morg, who did a fantastic job with all of them. I'm so happy with the results. You can follow Morg on Instagram at morgs underscore chronicles. I have six players in my campaign and I made a weapon for each of them. I did make these with their classes in mind, but I wanted them to be usable by any class, so most of them are pretty versatile. Most of the weapons have their own spell save DC based on your proficiency bonus and a mental stat of your choice, so you don't need to be a caster to use the magical effects. First up is the Firebolt Flintlock. This is the only one that's pretty specific in that it requires your character to know the Firebolt cantrip in order to attune to it. Crafted from driftwood embedded with shards of crystal that fell through a portal from the astral plane, this device acts as a conduit for your Firebolt and channels the magic. The magic interacts with the crystal dust that you load into it to create the different effects. Next is the Shadow Flame Rapier. The blade emanates heat, but no fire is visible. When light is cast on the sword, you can see its shadow is ablaze. When you make attacks with this weapon, you're creating a momentary rift and unleashing fire and power from this other realm. The blade of the Storm Dagger is forged from metal imbued with the power of storms from the elemental planes of water and air. As the blade moves through the air, small storm clouds form and dissipate, causing miniature strikes of lightning to hit the blade and crack with thunder. The returning ring blade is exquisitely crafted. The steel blade has intricate air motif etchings and the crystal core thrums with the magic of the elemental plane of air. Once you attune to the blade, it will always try to return to you. The blade can be used as a melee weapon or a thrown ranged weapon. Once the blade reaches the limit of its range, it returns to the wielder, slowing as it approaches so it can be easily snatched out of the air. The crystals at its core allow it to produce an array of magical effects. The Tidebreaker Battle Axe is also made from driftwood embedded with shards of crystal, except these occurred when an explosion on the moon caused debris to fall into the ocean on the material plane. These crystals are also inlaid in the blade and give the wielder the ability to harness a small part of the power of the moon and the tides. The Gauntlet of the Deep allows the wearer to access and channel a dark and insatiable power. After putting it on, watery tendrils flow down from the Kraken emblem, twisting down the arm and snaking into whatever weapon is currently being wielded. This gauntlet can lend its power to any non-magical weapon. Now that I've shown you the items that I made, let's make a printable template and assemble the cards. By the way, I'm running this campaign online, but I'm just gonna mail these cards to my players. The nice thing about paper props is you can just mail them with stamps and it's super cheap. I'm gonna put each of the upgrade abilities into small numbered envelopes and I'll instruct them to open certain numbered envelopes when they achieve an upgrade. I decided to make my template in Illustrator, but you could also use something free like Inkscape, which is a great alternative. I decided to make the cards tarot card size to give me some more room for all the different slots and mechanics going on. Tarot cards are two and three quarter inches wide by four and three quarter inches tall. I made one document for the base card, another document for each slot, and then another document for what I'm calling the DM card. I find that putting flavor text on magic item cards means the mechanics get really squished. So I have the main card, which is just mechanics, and then a second card where I'll put all the flavor text and a larger version of the illustration. I've made one of the items free down in the description, and the rest of the items and a pre-built template that you can use to make your own items is available on my Patreon at the $5 tier. The link for that is also down in the description. The card design is pretty simple. There are three ability slots, a box for the save DC, a box for the attack modifier, and the usual basic info. The ability slot template consists of a cutting guideline so you know where to cut, the text box that is lined up with the ability slot, and the ability track. After spending way too much time fussing over colors and minor details, it was time to print the cards. I picked up some Canon matte photo paper, some tarot-sized card sleeves, and this inkjet-compatible transparency print film. Links for all these
these things are down in the description. The Amazon links are affiliate links, so if you use them to make a purchase, I get a small commission. One quick note, the transparency film was extremely finicky to print on at first, and I wasted a lot of sheets. Luckily, the pack contains 50 sheets, so I have lots to spare. The transparency film kept getting jammed in my printer, and then the ink wasn't drying on it, it just kept rubbing off. The solution to the first issue was to tape each sheet of the transparency film onto a regular piece of paper. Because it's transparent, the printer wasn't registering it as paper and it kept thinking there was a foreign object in the printer. For the ink drying issue, I found that if I handled the sheets of the transparency film, the oils from my hands would prevent the inks from sticking to the film. So just avoid touching the areas you're going to print on and just try and touch the edges. The last tip is to set your printer to high gloss or ultra glossy paper. Once I got that trial and error out of the way, everything printed nicely. After carefully cutting everything out with a utility knife and managing not to slice my fingers open, I put it all together. I'm really happy with how these came out and I'm really excited to start giving them to my players. I'll give you a little sneak peek at two of the mechanics I'm most pleased with to hopefully inspire some of your mechanics. These are the level 3 versions meant for levels 15 to 20. The first is an ability that the ring blade has. You can use an action to throw the ring blade to a point within range and activate the crystal core. The blade will fly at high speeds in a 20 foot radius causing a small tornado. Each creature within the radius must make a strength saving throw. On a failure, a creature is pulled up to 20 feet towards the center. I'm really excited to see how my players combo this with some AoE spells and abilities. The other mechanic that I'm looking forward to seeing in action is from the Shadow Flame Rapier. You can use a bonus action to unleash a 10 foot tall circle of fire in a 10 foot radius around you. The wall provides 3 quarters cover, which is plus 5 AC, for 1 minute or until you dismiss it. Any creature that moves through the wall takes 2d8 fire damage. This will allow my players to set up and move cover on the battlefield, which I think will make it more dynamic. I would love to hear about what types of weapons and items you're thinking of making. Let me know down in the comments. Special cameo from Junie. Now that you've made some really cool magic items, you're going to need to make them come to life with your descriptions. You can check out this video here for some tips on leveling up your descriptions so your worlds, characters, and items feel truly alive. I appreciate you.